Hi there, my name is Peter Carvel and I want to welcome you to Massage for Friends and Family. Now you know people buy this DVD for many different reasons. Some people just want to learn a new skill, while others would like to surprise a family member or a partner with a massage. Some people are even thinking of becoming professional massage therapists and want to see if it's really for them and if they'd like to do it for a profession. No matter what your reason, the matter of the fact is you bought this DVD because you'd like to learn how to massage. And now over the next hour or so, we're going to teach you routines and techniques to a level where you can feel comfortable, not only giving a relaxing, but also an effective back and neck massage. Now we're not saying you'll be a professional massage therapist after all of this, but as you'll learn, there's a middle ground between not knowing any techniques and the skills of a professional massage therapist that we all can learn and enjoy. Let's move straight on to the next section where we'll start looking at the tools and the preparation you need to do before you can start your massage. Now before we have a look at the actual tools you need to do your massage with, let's quickly look at something else a lot more important, something called contraindications. Now contraindications is a list of conditions or state that the body can be in during which time you can't give someone a normal massage or massage at all. Let's quickly look at these conditions. Now the first group of contraindications is called total contraindications. And if anyone has any one of these conditions, they're not allowed to have a massage at all. Let's quickly look at some of them. Fever. Contagious or infectious disease including any cold or flu no matter how mild it may seem. Anyone under the influence of drugs or alcohol, including prescription pain medication. Anyone who's got recent operation or acute injuries and anyone with neuritis or any skin diseases. The second group of contraindications is called local contraindications and you're just not allowed to massage over the affected area. Let's look at some of them. Varicose veins, undiagnosed lumps or bumps, pregnancy, cuts or abrasions, sunburn, undiagnosed pain and any inflammation including arthritis. The third group is called medical contraindications and you have to get permission from a practitioner or a doctor before you can massage anyone with one of these conditions. Anyone with cardiovascular conditions, any conditions already being treated by a medical practitioner, heart problems, angina, anyone with a pacemaker and then all of the following. If you want to stop your DVD and have a look at all these conditions, you can do that. We're going to move on to the next section now where we will look at the actual tools you need to do your massage with. Now the first tool I want to talk about is probably the most obvious and that is oils. Now unless you're a professional aromatherapist, I wouldn't recommend you use any aromatherapy oil or essential oil. What you could do is go down to your local aromatherapist and have him or her make up oil for you, which you can then use on your friends and family. What I do recommend for non-professionals is what is known as base oils or carrier oils. There are many of these, but the two most common ones are sweet almond oil and grapeseed oil. Sweet almond oil is a little bit more expensive, but grapeseed oil is a lot less expensive and just as effective. In fact, a lot of professionals use grapeseed oil because it's so cost effective. Now when you start preparing your oil for massage, it's always good to put it in a container that's safe, easy, accessible and won't spill or break. Therefore, I use a little plastic container like this with a flip top that you can easily use with one hand, open and close it, put it in your pocket when you don't need it and take it out and apply some more oil when you do. You can also use a container like this, but like I say, it can spill, it can be awkward and it's just not very relaxing for the person that's being massaged. Now another thing that professional massage therapists do is to take a little container like this, fill it out three quarters of some warm water and just before the massage they leave their little oil container for 10-15 minutes in there just so the oil can get nice and warm. When they take it out and they start applying the oil to the person they're massaging, they don't get a fright because of cold oil touching their body. Now most people think that towels are just there to look good, but when you become a professional massage therapist, one of the most important things they teach you is towel technique. Mainly because keeping the modesty of a client can be the difference between a good massage and a bad massage. Now I'm not going to teach you all the techniques that a professional needs to know, but the two basics are make sure everything that's not being massaged is covered, and also make sure everything that's just been massaged is also covered to keep it nice and warm. If you have a couple of bath sheets and maybe two or three hand towels, that should be more than enough. 
apart from that, make sure everything that needs to be covered is covered and you should be okay. Now before you massage someone, you probably want him or her to lie down somewhere. One thing you do not want to do is massage anyone on the bed, mainly because it gives away. And the more you press and massage, the more it gives away and it's just ineffective. Rather get a nice tabletop or a carpet floor and just put down a couple of devices and let a person lie down on that. Always make sure you ask someone if he's comfortable. Now the next tool I want to talk about is probably the most important tool when it comes to setting a nice relaxing atmosphere and a mood in the room, and that's music. Now the few basic rules is make sure the music is not too loud, make sure your play is on continuous play, otherwise you might have to stop the massage to press another button, and also make sure you put the music on for 10 to 15 minutes before the massage, so it can relax yourself and the person if he or she is around. As to what music to play, if you go into any music store and you go to instrumental section, you'll find a lot of suitable music to play for massaging. One word of caution is if you do play music like whale or bird songs or thunder or rain, make sure that the person you're massaging actually like it as some people can find it irritating. Now the next tool is a tool that will assist music in giving a room a nice relaxed atmosphere and mood. And that is fragrance. Now unless you're a professional aromatherapist, you probably won't be using any aromatherapy oil or essential oil. So you'll need another way to get a nice fragrance in a room. Two ways of doing it is getting a nice little fragrance burner like this. We'll get a nice little fragrance oil that you can put in the top. You'll have a candle at the bottom and you'll light it and when the oil evaporates, it gives a nice fragrance to the room. Another way you can do it is to use candle sticks or scent sticks. One word of caution is when you do use scent sticks it can be very strong and can irritate people. Make sure you ask the person that's being massaged if he actually enjoys the smell and if he's alright with it. Now the last couple of things I want to talk about is something you'll do just before massage and then straight after. The first thing is to go and wash your hands in really warm water just before you do a massage. When you start touching someone then they don't get a fright because of cold hands because believe me there's nothing more irritating if you have a massage than your therapist having cold hands in touching your body. The last thing is a nice glass of cold water because giving a massage can be quite demanding and also receiving a massage moves a lot of the systems around in the body and it's not uncommon for someone to be very thirsty after a massage. Now that you have all the tools, let's move on to the next section where we'll look at the very last thing you'll do just before you start a massage. Now the very last thing you want to do just before you start a massage is to do a mental checklist just to make sure you've got everything there that you need to do the massage with. So make sure you've got your oil, your towels, your drink, make sure you've taken your watch off and make sure you don't have to go away in the middle of a session to go and find something that you should have had there in the first place. Once you know you've got everything, go and stand beside a person you're massaging, put your hand on his or hers back and start counting back from 15. As you count back, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. By the time you get to one, you'll be nice, relaxed and ready to give a massage. Now we're going to move to the next section now where we're going to start looking at the massaging techniques. We're going to start with the warm-up. What I'm going to do is tell you what each technique or move is called and then tell you how to learn it and teach it yourself and then I'm going to let the therapist show you a couple more times so you can watch and learn. After that I'm going to keep quiet because I know a lot of people will be watching this DVD while they're actually learning how to massage and it's going to be very irritating if someone keeps talking all the time. Let's move on to the next section now where we will learn how to massage. Now the first thing you want to do is apply oil. See how the therapist is putting oil in the hand rather than surround to a client's body, mainly because if the oil is cold you can warm it up and then start applying it. The first couple of moves we're going to learn is called effleuraging moves. Now effleuraging moves has got three purposes. First is to spread the oil, second is to warm the muscles up and third is to acquaint yourself with the person you are massaging and him or her with you as the therapist. Now the first move is very straightforward. You start at the bottom of the spine, 
move up the spine and then down the sides. You do this in three sections until you get to the top, then you move around the shoulders and all the way back to the spine. At this stage the pressure is very light. See how the therapist is stopping there, she'll be doing that before every new move she's teaching us. Now the second move is very much like the first one, but almost in reverse. You start at the top, move around the shoulders, come back to the spine and then push back off. Come back to the spine once again and push back down. You'll do this once again in three sections until you get to the bottom of the spine and move all the way to the top and do it another two or three times. You can increase the pressure at this stage very slightly, but the pressure is still very light. Now the next move is a friction move and at this stage you do not want to apply a lot of pressure mainly because you can burn the skin if you move too fast. It's a very quick movement up and down and you start from the one side of the body and move all the way to the other side. This movement gets the body and muscles warm very quickly. Now the next move is what is known as a knuckling movement. Basically you take your hand and make a fist of it and then move your knuckles up and down and apply pressure onto the client's body. You start at the bottom of the spine and then move your way up to the top of the spine and all the way around down to sides and back to the bottom of the spine. You can increase the pressure once again slightly but it's still a very light pressure. Here you can see in more detail what the therapist is actually doing. Now the very last movement in the warm-up section is what I call spider walking. It's a very easy move to do and very relaxing and very rewarding. Basically what you're doing is putting your thumbs in front of each other and then pull them up by moving your hands and walking up the spine and back off your client. Once again start from the one side of the body and move all the way to the other side, covering the whole back.
Let's quickly look at this move in more detail. See when she takes her hand how she's actually pulling her thumb up by walking up the spine and the back of her client. 